Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I will show you how you can easily archive SharePoint list items, including attachments. I've already created a video on archiving SharePoint list items and keeping date, time and author name intact. You can click on the top right corner to look at that flow. Today, I will take that flow one step further and also include attachment to be copied across when we are archiving the items. So any shape on list item which contains attachment will also carry over into the archive list. So this is the first step I have created already in that video. I will just go through it quickly. So I'm running a schedule flow. I'm getting items. So any item which is less than today minus 365. So mean anything in the last year. And then I'm creating item into this old order list. So before I show you the flow, let me show you the list structure. So I have order lists which have few orders, some with attachments, some without attachments. And then I have old order list, which is an archive list, a copy of same list with all the columns. So the idea here is that any item which is created, including attachment copies over into the archive list with date, time and author names intact. So in terms of flow, which I've set up in the first video is to get items from the order list and I added a filter here to only show me the item which is one year old. Okay. And then I'm creating the list record into the old order list going through for each loop. In the next step, I'm writing a data operation compose and I'm taking the author name and the editor name and modified and created date into this object. And then I'm sending an HTTP request to this newly created ID record. And then I'm patching that information. So it keeps the person created and modified and the date timestamp intact. And then finally, I'm going through each of this list item, which we have already copied and deleting it from the main list. People in the community approach me that how we can incorporate copying of attachment. So hence I'm making this video. So if you have any topic, anything you want me to make a video on, please add in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer those questions or create a new content on that topic. First thing I will need to create a variable. I'll click on plus sign, add an action. I will initialize a variable. I will give this variable a name. I'll just call it item ID and the type is string. I won't give it any value yet. Inside for each loop where I'm going through each of this get item, I need to set the variable the item ID value. I'll click on plus sign, add an action. I'll click on see more and then I will select set variable. So variable will select item ID. The value, I will set a dynamic value, which will be the ID of that get item. Okay, so we will need this get item ID later on. Next, we are creating item and we are adding the metadata to it as well. So before we end this for loop, I'll click on the plus sign here and add an action. And the action I'm looking for is get attachment action. So I will select that. I will select the side, which is the sales team and the list, which is a source list is called orders. And the ID is actually the ID of this for each item, which is in question. So I will select it dynamically and the get items ID. This is the ID we will need. Next, we need to loop through each of the attachments. So an item can have multiple attachments. So I will click on the plus sign and add an action and search for apply to each control. I will select that and an output will select from the previous control dynamically is the body of that get attachment. So that will be the output from previous control. Now within apply to each, we need to get file content. So attachment content. So if I click on plus sign, add an action, get attachment content. So this is the action we'll need here. We'll select the site, which is the sales team site. The list will select orders list, which is our source list. Now this ID is where we need to use this ID of that item, which we have set in the variable. So for ID, I cannot see that ID. So let me check the type of that variable. I did a mistake there. So it has to be ID integer instead of string. So when we set the value, we are setting the value to that ID, which is a string. So I will select it again. So ID of that get item. So this way we are setting to an integer variable, the value of that get item. Now, when I go there inside the apply to each get attachment content, 
I should be able to select that ID, item ID. I can see that here. Now, the reason why we created a separate variable for this one is that you can see there's an apply to each loop within for each loop. So the item function context runs inside the apply to each loop. Hence, we cannot directly access the item within this for each loop. So to make the life easy, we just created a variable and we're passing that outer loop ID into the variable so we can reuse it inside this inner loop. And then for the file identifier, we'll select a dynamic value, which is the get attachment previous step ID. Okay, so we are done with the get attachment content action. Now within this apply to each loop, just after the get attachment content, we need to add attachment to this newly created item as well. So I'll click on plus sign, add an action, add attachment action of SharePoint. I will select that. I will select the site. I will select the document library. Now this time we're going to select the destination library where we are copying the attachment to. So old orders, the ID is the ID of that create item record. So whenever we created the item, it return us an ID in the old orders list. So I will select that value dynamically. So create item and ID. So that's the ID we need. And for file name, I will get dynamic value. And then from the get attachment action, I will select the display name. That will be the file name. And in terms of the file content, I will again select attachment content from the get attachment content action. So I will select attachment content here. Okay. So now we are done with that flow and after all, it's going to delete that item after it copies the data and all the attachments. So if I go back to the list, we can see this VR record was created six hours ago, but both of these other records were created in May and or June. So let me change this flow a little bit so we can just take this VR record and process it. If I go back to the flow and if I look at the get item, I'm saying anything created less than 365 days so anything over a year old copy that but let's change it so i will change it to anything created is greater than utc now minus 10 so anything which is in the last 10 days copy that data across i'll click on update obviously if you are archiving data you will be looking for more older record because you will be maybe archiving anything more than six month old or one year old in that case you will use the less than and UTC now minus 365 or minus 180 if it's six months. Uh, but for testing, I just need to move anything which is created in the last 10 days. So we can say greater than today minus 10 days. So in that case, if I go back to the order list, this record was created today and these are all created a few months ago. So in the last 10 days, greater than last 10 days only satisfy condition for this record. So in our case, only this record should be moved and this record have Two attachments so if i click on it there is a pdf attachment and there is a word document as well so this should also move to the old orders list so if i go to old order list it's empty at the moment i will go back to the flow and i will click on save and let's test this flow so let's do the recap so we initialize the variable we are getting item from the orders list we are going through the each item in the order list we are setting the variable to the current item id and then we are creating an item in the old order list. Then we are fetching the author, editor, modified and created date and names. And we're sending HTTP request to the newly created record in the old order list to update the metadata. Then for each of these items, we are getting all the attachments. And then we're going through each of the attachment, we're getting the contents of the attachment. And then we are attaching each attachment to that newly created record in the archive list. And finally, outside that loop, we are deleting the item from the main orders list. So let's click on test. I will run manually, click on test, run the flow, click done. Now you can see the flow steps are completed and it all ran successfully. If I go to orders list, I cannot see that VR record here anymore because it satisfies the condition of being only created in the last 10 days. And then if I go to old order list, I can see the record is created here. So you can see 
the date time stamps are intact it was created by me and modified by me so they are all there now if i open this record i can see there are two attachments so if i click on one of them which is a pdf document i can see that and if i click on the other attachment which is a word document i can see that as well now let's go back to the orders list we are having three more orders here some of them were created by me some by adam in different dates so if i go back to the flow and change the flow logic if i go edit and i will go to the get item filter and if i change created less than 30 days which means any record which is more than 30 days old is going to be processed in that case if i go back to order list these are all created in may or june and created by me or adam they all will be moved into archive list which is our old orders list so let me run this flow again i'll click on save and test i will run it manually click on test run flow done it found three items so you can see the four each have three items in there so it all running successfully there was only the ipad order which has attachment the rest of the two order did not have any attachment so now if i open this old order in new tab you can see the old order have all three records ipad keyboard and pc screen created and you can see the created dates are in may and june and also modified dates are in june and may as well and then you can also see that is created by a different person even the flow is running in my context is still keeping all those date time and author name intact if i go back to order list i can't see those order anymore because the last step was to delete the orders from the order list so there you have it now you can create an automated archiving process for your sharepoint list with attachments going forward and you want to make sure that your live environment is lightweight and does not have any irrelevant data in there this is the second part of the video so in this part you can use this functionality to also move the attachments to the archive list as well while keeping the date timestamp and author fields intact thank you very much for watching this video consider subscribing if you're new to the channel and if you have any question please add in the comment section below i'll be happy to answer i will see you in the next video thank you